Thank you again for joining me today on Side by Side. Today we're going to take a little walk further, but today the thing I want you to notice more than anything else is the light. Because one of the amazing things about walking here in Port Rush or anywhere around the North Coast is a special nature or a special quality that the light can possess. Alongside the sea, there's a sort of a reflection that comes off the sky and a reflection that comes off the water so that it seems to brighten up. I think this may be what C.S. Lewis was thinking about when he talked about this idea of northerliness. And certainly, I have discovered it myself in living here for these last number of years. It's as though as I get further north, I get a brightness, especially at this time of the year. This brightness seems to be more evident. Sometimes when some of our family come back for a day or two, having been living much further, hundreds of miles further, they notice how much brighter it is in the evening. But light is a very interesting thing. Isn't it something that is different throughout the day? I was out this morning quite early. The stars are up. I'm taking the dog out for a little bit of fresh air. And I notice the, the little bit of a glimmer of a sunrise over on the east there. And a few stars and a little bit of the, of the moon is still there. A beautiful type of light, but a different light. Within maybe 40 or 50 minutes, that will all have changed again. And then think about then the big sun in the middle of the day, as we had yesterday here up on the north coast. And then the evening colours, how amazing those colours can be, especially if there's a few, there are a few clouds around, to create shapes and shadows, colours. It's so amazing, isn't it? Even low light has a sense of warmth and a security. And today... Well, today the light is good. Isn't it amazing too, the regularity of this? Every day the sun rises and the sun sets. The sun is shining. The light it's giving out is constant. Well, light is a theme in Scripture. A theme that's, well, it's far, far too extensive for one short walk today. But maybe I can point out or raise a few truths to help us and encourage us. The verse I want to go to today in the passage is found in John chapter 8. It takes place at uh, the Festival of Tabernacles, one of the three pilgrim festivals that the Jewish people held. And it was at this festival that Jesus said these words. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. As I said, this was a festival, one of the three pilgrim festivals, where you had to go to Jerusalem. That's what it meant. You had to pilgrim up to Jerusalem to celebrate this. It was in the autumn time, September, October, October. The harvest time is over. And this is the festival that you bring the offering of your produce in. It also symbolized this Feast of Booths or Festival of Booths to acknowledge and to remember when the people of Israel had to go through the wilderness and live that life of nomads' life. It was a time of joy. It's described as a, a feast of joy. Good things are brought in. And it also is to remind the people that the God who is the Good Shepherd has chosen to tabernacle with his people. So there are lots of things going on in this festival, and some of them link in just even to what we've been thinking about over Christmas time. When we read in the New Testament in John's Gospel that the Lord came and dwelt or tented, or the word is really tabernacled with us, it's given us this idea that he's walking with us. He's come to go through the journey with us. Now, in the original temple, the great temple, in the court of the woman, you had these tall pillars, and on them there were these candelabra. The oil was poured in, and old 
and unused priest's garments would be used for the wick to light. And these candles or these great lights were lit. And the, the view of it from some distance, because the, the temple is up high on the mountain, gave the sense of the glory of God shining out, somewhat like what we would call the Shekinah glory, the glory that the people might have seen originally in the Exodus when God walked with them, the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. And so it really was a great and a joyful occasion. And it's into that occasion that Jesus speaks. First of all, he talked about the water being the living water, which is another symbol. But today we're just thinking about the light. He says, I am the light of the world. And when you think about this idea of light, as we said, it is so extensive in the Bible. Jesus is claiming here to be God himself. It's one of those great I am statements in John's Gospel. And of course, the word I am is a word that is totally synonymous with God. When Moses is asking, who will I say to the people when he goes back in Exodus, tell them, I am has sent you. It's God's way of describing himself, his eternity, his nature. And so when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he's claiming to be God himself. Now it was God who said, let there be light, and there was light. And there's so much in the Old Testament that speaks all about the idea of light. Thy word is a light unto my path, and, and a lamp unto my feet is another of those. You know, we pray that we might know the light of his truth. And so it helps us today to think about this really wonderful, wonderful picture of our Saviour. Jesus says, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of the world. Notice what that is saying. You see, you cannot follow the darkness, can you? But if someone has a light, if there is a light, you can clearly see the way to go. Jesus is the way, he later on will say that. In John 14, you may know those verses too. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And so as we travel on this journey, because life is like a journey, isn't it? For Christians, we call it a pilgrimage. It's our pilgrim path. We have the light of Christ. And that light often is to be found in his word. Because light infers understanding. It remo the removal of darkness. Darkness is like an ignorance. I don't know. I, I don't understand. But when the light comes, I start to see things. I see new things. I see old things in new ways. I see things as they really are. And what a difference it is to see things as they really are. The Bible says that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. It says they refused to come into the light. But when we are willing to come to Jesus, to come to his truth, to sit at his feet, to open up his word and let its light literally illumine us and our hearts and our sin and his grace. Boy, what a difference that makes. The very next chapter in John chapter 9, and it's worth going on to read the next chapter, is an example of how Jesus brings the light into the darkness of a man's life. And it's done and shown to us in a physical form because this man, he is blind. And so Jesus talks about this in verse eight, 4. He says, as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And then he performs a miracle and opens the man's eyes. That's what Jesus and the truth of Jesus does for us. It opens our eyes that we can see. And if you and I are believers, don't we want us to continue, him to continue to open our eyes daily to see the amazing truths about himself and about this world and about ourselves? And if you're not a Christian, then what I would say is just utter that prayer, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes that I might see. And it would be amazing what God will show you. So as we go out into the world today, just remember, 
If there was no light, what would it be like? Total darkness. There'd be no existence. Well, it's the same. For many who don't know Christ, that's exactly what it is. They don't know true existence because the light has never fully shone in their hearts of the gospel, of the glory of the Lord Jesus. Let me pray for us. Father, today, may we both understand and appreciate the beauty of the natural light. But above all, may we come to comprehend a little more the glory of he who is the light of the world. And as we walk through whatever it is we're walking through today, may as we turn to you, our true light, and in your holy word find light, may we there be guided step by step through whatever it is, be it ever so dark, to the praise of the glory of your name. Amen. Amen.